Coming up next on the program, we'll discuss the state of crypto regulation with Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO of the payments company Ripple. That conversation next. This is Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg Surveillance Early Edition. You're looking live at the Principal Room. Coming up later today, General Motors Chair and CEO Mary Barra. That's at 8.30 a.m. in New York, 1.30 p.m. in London. This is Bloomberg. Good morning. This is Bloomberg Surveillance Early Edition. I'm Tom McKenzie with Anna Edwards here in London. Kayleigh Lines is in New York. Matt Miller is off. OK, in its attempt to uh, streamline cross-border payments, Ripple is using crypto to cut down on costs through a new product called On Demand Liquidity. Our Yusuf Gamaladin joins us now from Riyadh with the company's CEO. Yusuf. Yeah, Tom, I mean, we are cutting through a very busy schedule here in downtown Riyadh, but it is all about some of these new innovations. And the peer-to-peer -peer powered cryptocurrency Ripple is part of that uh, bigger conversation that we're about to have with the CEO who joins us here. Of course, that is uh, Brad Garlinghouse. Thanks for coming on the show, Brad. Thrilled to be here. Thank you for having me. The turnout here is just nothing short of astounding. Uh, what kind of conversations have you had? What kind of deals have you been able to sign? Well, I totally agree. The energy here, the entrepreneurial energy, uh, particularly in a, a you know maybe a, almost a post-COVID world. So. We've had uh, amazing engagement here at FII with existing customers, with potential customers. It's really just been a, a profound experience for me so far. So what additional momentum have you been able to build into the, the Ripple growth story? Have you been able to come to any new agreements? Because a, a lot of the cross-border payments, the big channels, come through this part of the world. It's really true. I mean, this is a major centerpiece of remittance uh, networks and certainly the immigrant populations here in uh, the Middle East and certainly here in the kingdom between India, Pakistan, the Philippines. And so you know, these have always been populations which pay very high fees for their remittance traffic. And what we're focused on is bringing those down. The, the Middle East has been one of our fastest growing regions. We've grown network activity for Ripple enabled payments 5x year on year here in the Middle East. It's our fastest growing region. And I think it really is only just getting started because it is such a center point as you described. What stood out to you in the last couple of months in terms of the adoption of some of the cryptocurrencies? We've had a pretty impressive rally in Bitcoin again, yeah. uh, but it's kind of trickled through the, the, the wider crypto space. What would you take away from that? Well, I, I take a, a macro long term view. You know, it's very clear that where we've started maybe almost 10 years ago with crypto really being a, a fringe and edge case and where it's now become mainstream. Uh, you know, the, the number of people who are holding crypto globally continues to grow very, very quickly. And the believers in how we can use these technologies for real benefit, not for just the speculative dynamics associated with those who may speculate as investors, what have you. But really, in, as Ripple is using, these technologies can dramatically improve the efficiency of things like cross-border payments. And it, those today can be very inefficient by speed and cost. And right. we can make them real-time and very inexpensive. How does that fit in with some of the goals that have been announced at FII around net zero for Saudi Arabia? It's going to be 2060. There have been concerns about energy usage with some of the cryptocurrencies. Run me through what the thinking is at Ripple. Well, for Ripple, that is also kind of the heart of how we think about success. You know, one of the things that has helped XRP, the digital asset that's native to our technology stack, is it's extremely energy efficient. While I'm a believer in crypto at large, I'm certainly a believer in Bitcoin, the energy consumption associated with Bitcoin is profoundly bad. Uh, it's 120 terawatts. This is equivalent to you know, the total energy production or consumption of the country of Argentina. So, you know, I do think it's something that we have to address and solve and be cognizant of. One of the things that has been very good for Ripple's direction of travel and certainly our momentum going into 2022 yeah. has been the fact that XRP is about almost a million times more energy efficient okay. than a Bitcoin transaction. What about regulation? What are you hearing? Could that come quite soon, would you yeah. say? Well, again, I think if you step back and look at a macro level, the direction of travel for regulation globally has been very positive for crypto. 
I've been in this industry about seven years, and if you had told me seven years ago that you'd have countries like the UAE here in the Middle East, but certainly Switzerland and the UK, Japan, Singapore, these are all leading G20 markets that have clear regulations around crypto, and it's allowing the industry to thrive in those markets, and you're seeing more growth. And I think you're going to continue to see that going into so 2022. The US would have fallen behind then in your in your assessment. Without question. Uh, surprisingly, given where so much of the entrepreneurial activity in crypto has been U.S.-based, the U.S. has kind of been a laggard in crypto regulation. There hasn't been a, a level of clarity that the U.S. did enable in enabling the Internet growth in the late 90s. And so I think we're still hoping for that. And I think actually you'll see progress over the next 12 to 18 months in the United States that should help. And you're seeing more of a call to action from Congress to act. One of the fronts that you've opened is a new fund that aims to help creators around NFT, $250 million worth. Which marketplaces are you going to partner up with? Well, certainly we think of NFTs as a, a major expansion and opportunity around crypto broadly. Uh, you know, enabling whether it's artists, musicians, but even other industry uh, enablement. You know, on the stage earlier today, one of my, my uh, fellow panelists, a guy Mike Novogratz, was talking about the use of NFTs to actually manage your health records. The point there is really that NFTs, I think, can be an element of how we manage data, data rights, and artists obviously love it because they can take out some of that middleman and go direct to consumers. I think we're just getting started and over the next five years, the expansion of NFTs is going to bring more people into crypto at large and you're going yeah. to see the market grow dramatically. Brad, terrific catching up. Thank you for stopping by. That is uh, Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO at Ripple. Tom, Anna? Thanks very much. Thanks to Yusuf Gamaladin and also thanks to Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse for stopping by with Yusuf at that conference over in Riyadh.